Thank you very much uh, for that warm introduction, uh, respected chair. And then uh, I have always been uh, very influenced uh, by uh, one person, uh, Mr. Abdul Kalam Saab. So I, I have always followed his uh, one line, which is, I would say, uh, that, that's been my statement forever. Uh, dream is not what you see in sleep. Dream is that which does not let you sleep. So I think uh, now I see that uh, Dr. Bansi Sabu's, uh, Saab's dream, uh, what probably he had 10 years back of taking this uh, whole DAC here to that level where it is not only uh, the updates and subject, the technology, but also socialization. And then uh, there's so much amount of uh, interaction professionally also what we see. So kudos to the entire team here. So uh, to start uh, quickly uh, on my talk, of which I'm going to talk about a new generation insolence. So we, we all love technology. See, uh, things have changed tremendously, and it will keep on changing tremendously. So uh, any one of you love cars here? I think most of us love cars. So uh, can anybody tell me uh, which is this car? It's a difficult one, but somebody who, who loves uh, can, can go a while. Maybe a uh, chair, if you want to take a guess of the car. Uh, yeah. So uh, the whole idea is the journey, journey, 100 years uh, of journey of Chevy. So you will see the 100 years of journey of Chevy, how it has moved on, and now what we have this year the EV and the latest. The same way, this is what 100 years of journey insulin has done. So we all know, and then I, I would say, we are privileged a generation to be a part of this completion of 100 years of insulin journey, the lovely journey. So this is the first time uh, you will see the insulin which was used so that, and then now, till the latest uh, pens, what we have, to the latest innovation. So this is the latest innovation which just got approved. It's going to get released in November. So this is a device which will be kept on any of the insulin pens. So it is a single unit add-on device uh, which can be added. The beauty of this is it will capture the dose value dialed, the injection event, the time, the temperature, and the mounting and the unmounting events. So. This, this looks very promising. Again, I think we all will have a lot of debate that will it work in India, will it not, and all. I think that that is a separate question. But to now, this is how 100 years looks like. So today, I'm just going to talk on two important studies uh, from India. So that is the updates on the co-formulation. Uh, that is the Rhizodec, which is the smart study and the updates on the ultra-long uh, basal, that is the trust study and the in-range RCTs. So both of them have been done, I would say, by my senior colleague and good friends. So uh, this is uh, the SMART study, that is the safety of insulin degludec and aspart. So we, we are talking about, basically, if to make it very simple, insulin rhizodec. In patients with diabetes over a period of one year, routine clinical care in India. So that is a SMART study, Indian and then that got published very recently. So it's like just December last year where it got published. Uh, it had good amount of patients. So there are patients, you will see here around 1,000 odd patients which were uh, there in the patient's study who received the injection rhizodec. And the data were collected at 0, 3, 6, and 12 months. It is a multi strand trick. I think that is where. Uh, it becomes very important that whenever you're doing a clinical trial, it becomes very important that you get the data from different centers, probably different ethnicities, where it makes it more interesting and you get the real value of the study. A prospective and a single arm observational. The key inclusion where men and women are diabetes more than 18 years are scheduled to start on treatment with rhizodic. So uh, you will see the reasons for starting rhizodic uh, treatment. So these were divided, and then these were uh, the reasons. Uh, the first reason I think all of us would agree is the improvement in the A1C, improvement in the postprandial. So we always felt that, yes, uh, it has a short-acting and a long-acting component. So PPG 
improvement in the fasting i think this is where uh, our thoughts again have to change that this is what they claim it as a total control so this has both so yes it gives you a fasting and a postprandial control reduce risk of hyperglyce hypoglycemia and need for flexibility as well change in uh, the baseline a1c you will see uh, the change in baseline a1c was around 1.8% in the insulin treated arm and where in the OAD arm so patients who were on the OADs where this was started you will see it was around 1.7% changing the fasting so the it's not the postprandial but there was a significant reduction in fasting you will see a 50 mg per deciliter reduction in fasting 82.5 mg uh, reduction in the postprandial so this is also a very important figure what are the major concepts i think my just fellow colleague was talking about the gap study where uh, the prescription pattern and uh, how's the usage of insulin i think we still feel two things come to our mind when we want to give insulin therapy first is of course i would still say uh, the needle fill prick fear i think all of us would agree is still there whatever said and done if you are practicing you will agree with that and then second is the risk of hypoglycemia and third would be the weight gain i think this is how we see generally in practice whatever clinical uh, practice we do so coming to the important part of hypoglycemia so here you will see the number of hypoglycemic events so before the study when uh, the patients were taken into the study you will see at visit one baseline where 176 and once the study was started these patients were started on rhizodic uh, it significantly came down so it is not only the confirmed hypoglycemia but the severe hypoglycemia as well so uh, to summarize that it says there is it gives you a better good a1c reduction of around 1.8 percent controls the fasting and the postprandial effective fasting uh, blood glucose control and improve safety so when we're talking about insulin yes we need an insulin where we can start it easily intensify the therapy and see that patient does not land into hypoglycemia and over a period of time you do not want your patients to have that weight gain as well coming to the uh, next so this is a uh, one year safety and effectiveness of insulin degludec in patients with diabetes again done in india this is the trust so this is the traceba real world use study data where patients here included were both type 1 and type 2 diabetic patients around 1000 odd patients this is again a prospective non-interventional uh, post authorization safety study so insulin degrudec was added to the routine clinical practice and then uh, they were monitored for a period of one year i will not go into the uh, endpoints and the secondary endpoints uh, the incidence of adverse events uh, you will see again it is almost a uh, similar when you compare it uh, with the placebo the a1c's i think effectiveness whenever we talk about insulin first thing what we want is the reduction in the sugars why we are starting insulin therapy so change from baseline at one year in overall population you will see is around 1.8 percent in insulin naive patients it is around 1.9 percent and patients who were already on insulin before it's around 1.6 percent change in the fasting is around 64.7 milligram in overall so roughly 65 to 70 is where the fasting blood sugars came down coming to the other aspect the risk of hypoglycemia so the no episodes of severe hypoglycemia were reported again so it is not only the effectiveness but the hypoglycemic risk as well and the dose so whenever uh, we want to give a insulin therapy it is very important to calculate the dose and uh, that we do that so you will see the mean starting dose of insulin degludec in insulin experienced patient was, was somewhere around 18 units and insulin naive patients were around 13 units estimated change in the mean daily insulin dose in baseline was around 14 and then most of them at the end of one year did very good at 18 units so that's a very fair number so uh, to conclude uh, the real world evidence study in Indian patients with diabetes receiving insulin deglibet confirms its safety. So we've seen the 
A1C reduction, we've seen the safety profile. So insulin degludec help in reduction in the fasting, A1C, and then yes, uh, there was, uh, they say it also helped in postprandial reduction as well. But I think per se, when we talk about uh, a basal insulin, all of us know that yes, when we talk about basal insulin, it is the fasting, what we are talking about. And it, I think it all started uh, probably uh, 15, 16 years before where we started with the thought treat to target treat to reach the fasting first so that is where it all started target to reach the fasting first where we all were obsessed i will say to reach the fasting first and then control the postprandial hyperglycemia i think but now we have moved away from the glycemic triad so we always believed as a postgraduate student uh, from a government medical college I think what my professors used to tell me was fasting, postprandial, and A1C. I think we did practice it for a longer period. But in the last, I would say, a little more than a decade, we've seen that we moved from the glycemic triad to the glycemic pentad, where the quality of life and glycemic variability, I think this two have made a lot of difference. And we have seen that it is not only the fasting sugars, but it is the postprandial hyperglycemia. Especially in a country like India, I think feasting and fasting is what we all do. We have just done that with our lunches. We're going to do that again in the evenings. I can see a few smiles there. So that, so that is how it is. So you, you have to practice you, what you preach. So it is not that you control your fasting today, give the patient three months or six months of time, take care of the postprandial later wait for all that end organ damage and then start something which is not going to help your patient so it is from day one you start something which takes control of both fasting and postprandial so that that gv is also controlled i think in years to come now we're going to talk more and more about mage more and more about cgms more and more about gv i think that is how we're going to look at drugs which helps you to not only control your sugars, but we can also look at this parameter of GV, that is the glycemic variability, which is gonna change the way how we are looking at treating our diabetic patients. So this is uh, my, I would say just a couple of slides before I end. Uh, this is an in-range study again, uh, which was done with Degludec versus Glargine 300. So I think these are the two real basal insulins if I have to talk about what we have now. So here again, the patients were divided equally between the two arms. One arm, the patient was started on Glargine 300 IU. Another arm, the patient was started on insulin Degludec. And then, then they were followed up for a period of one year. So what I was talking about is the CGMS. So you will see the data. So these patients were put on CGMS. 44 uh, minutes more in the time in range. So this is where C whenever we are starting a CGMS, the best what we want is at least 70% of the day your patient should spend in that TIR range in that 24 hours. So 44 minutes more the patient spent and 44.94 minutes lesser time above the range. So that is also very important. It is not only within the range, it is TAR and TBR also. Here probably because it was a basal insulin, so risk of hypoglycemia was not there. So TBR is not uh, calculated here, but it is the TIR and the TAR. So with two same insulins, getting the same result, but you will see the differences in the GV. So uh, yes, when both were used head to head, you will see improved TIR, lower TAR, comparable time below range and lowers A1C. So I would just end it with saying it's a wonderful scientific conference. So what is science? Science is the process that takes us from confusion to understanding. Thank you so much for your patient listening.